Hello everybody, welcome to the first match of the Season 2 Blood Bowl 3 Finals. That's more or less what it is. I want to restart, but I'm not going to. Um, <laughs> we've got Hiru in blue with dwarves, Smilezo in red with lizard men, and in the booth is Andy Davo. Hello. Hello, Jimmy. How you doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm all right. All right. Looking forward to this one. Brilliant. Yes, uh, this is great to to have you in the booth finally it's it's been it's been a long time there's it's been a rocky road but it's great that we're that we're here doing this and uh yeah this is uh this is it this is the final 16 um we've got a very tough match for hero right he's got four guard mighty blow slayer block runner only one runner I'd be tempted to not play the runner on defense here to ensure he's got it on offense. Like, but then you then you're missing out on a skill, right? So, I kind of hate the one runner build, honestly. And uh, I think it's too too fluffy to to take it on defense here. You you can't. Yeah, it's it it is yeah. And then smiles or um, standard standard lizard men, right? Six block. Love to see it. Looks like he's going to play the chameleon skink on offense for the the free catch chance. And uh, only two re-rolls, and then obviously both sides have got apples. There you go. Uh, so yeah, I mean, a big favourite. I think Smiles was a big favourite. I've I play. I won the NAF kickoff event with Dwarves, and I had to play two Lizard Men games, and it is awful. It is so unbelievably terrible. Artemis was going to play Dwarves in this, and then he, once he saw my NAF kickoff games, he's like, "No way! I don't! I don't just! I don't just want to auto lose to Lizard Men. Like, it's almost an auto loss. I I think this game, you know, uh, Hero's going to have to get really lucky to even. Oh, to even have much of a chance. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't fancy him. Do you? Do you blitz with the Crocs here into one of the guard, and just assume that if it works, great. If it doesn't work, not. Or are you playing this from the point of view of using the Crocs just to stand next to a couple of things and just tie it out? Ah. Uh... I guess I, I guess I'm not activating him because I haven't put him on the LOS for some reason. <laughs> um, so I guess I, I would try to activate him as little as possible, and just you know, oh my god, he's instantly dub scold, and uh, and he can he can accept this, but he's, he's using he's losing all momentum, isn't he? This is a, this is a bit of a tough choice. Um, I just rely on the block source as much as possible and try and use the crocs to just like you know tie people down and stuff. This is a real choice because he's gonna he's gonna get guard wedged into him and all his Saurus is gonna get bowled over because he'll blitz one and then knock the other three over. Yep. I think you I think you re-roll this. You might have to, yeah. But and then you have to play really passion uh, passively for the next three turns just to waste time. Yeah, yeah. you're I'm, losing so much momentum, but it's great. Like one of the great things about Blood Bowl Three is that he can use, you know, he can use all of his two minutes. He can even go into the time bank to think whether to re-roll this or not, which was, you know, instead of those horrible thirty-second chunks in Blood Bowl Two, I I hated that so much. You know, thirty seconds inside the game it was terrible. Um, yeah, so he, he the thing is, he could have he could have accepted it right in that, you know, he had like the ball. He has already got the ball in hand. And he's got like a decent screen, so like it actually was a choice. But I think, I think rerolling is probably the correct, correct play. Why did the dice roll after the event? It... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's it's a it's a mystery, isn't it? Yes. Your monetization status is definitely a mystery. That's the word we use. <laughs> um, well, the, the thing about the crocs, I'd have the crocs on the LOS. I'd have the crocs on the LOS, and then I can make the block blocks first, and then I can do with a crocs 3D, right? I don't want to have to. I don't have to like bring in two assist blitz with him. How how do you get two assist blitz with him? So you can't blitz with the crocs now. Almost too risky. So that's why I want him on the LOS. Trying for a three D, and if you go stupid, you've got a strength uh, four Saurus with block to to take the hit instead. Anyway, so yeah, just not activate him. Was the play? Yeah, sit and waste two turns now. That's got to be the plan, hasn't it? 
Or, 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 yeah, well, six turns. That's <laughs> Dim, Dimmy's plan. Dimmy's uh, li lizard man analysis is pretend to play Blood Bowl for seven turns and then score. And uh, that is pretty much what they tend to do, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. They can go side to side super easily and, uh, you know, they dominate anybody strength wise, I guess, except, except Black Orcs, which equal them. But then they, they outspeed those by. 11 tree men. <laughs> oh, it's 22 total. Jesus. It is, yeah. yeah. Every single player is two squares faster, which is, which is quite a lot, isn't it? Imagine dwarves being two squares slower. <laughs> yeah, imagine any team. I'm not sure any team, if you took two movement off every single player, you know, could even be a, a consideration for a team. No. Skaven would just die. No, it wouldn't work, would it? There's, there'd be no team. <laughs> no. It's tough. You have to give them something. Yeah, it's rude. What did we give them? Six brawler. Right, there you go. There's your 22 movement. I'll trade it in for six brawler. What? And thick skull. <laughs> and grab. And, you know, look, they're, they're pretty fun. They're pretty fun with the, uh, you know, like, because they get more reserves and more rerolls. So they get to, like, be a bit more... Uh, they get to be a bit more foully and stuff, don't they? they? Like they bring things to the table, and they can be fun. But um, yeah, you know, they're, they're just not as good as lizards ultimately. I like what he's trying to do here. Trying to, I presume, trying to pop out one of the dwarves that's lying down. Yeah, on a pow. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea. Recover. Recover without having to dodge. Probably just leaves them lying down now. I think. I always think that the, the problem with this drive... Oh, he's got to move them forward. Because the, the lizard coach is just going to go, OK, cool, end turn. I've got one reroll. No. <laughs> You've got to go and put pressure on. So that all those players that didn't move, they should have all moved forward and, and, and squidged a bit. Maybe not contact, but they've got to come forward. Yeah. Do you, do you know what? He's done this blitz. I preferred this guy because he goes a square further, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. He could have still reached there. And he look, he's left him there, so... If you don't leave him there, you've got to go back so that you're not tagged on a push. So uh, I like I like blitzing for the extra hit, but it, it, the the two ways were you blitz with a closer guy and move back in case that's a push, or you blitz with a further away guy to to make it a bit safer so you can accept the double skulls easier. Because if he if he double skulled with the closest one, that would have been a bit dodgy. But yeah. um, not terrible, not terrible. <laughs> I don't think he's going to move the Crocs again, and I don't think he's going to move the other two sword. Oh, no, yeah, he's going to yeah. leave them. Yeah, yeah, keep them there for sure. And the Dwarf Coach has got to do something. The, the emphasis is actually on the Dwarf Coach with the three re-rolls and, and no speed to, to press this here. The problem, is the, for overtime. the problem is if they push it, then there's a real good chance... You, you end up with like seven prone dwarves, <laughs> you know, one of them removed, one of them stunned, <laughs> and then you get that again the next turn and again the next turn and they just don't roll a one in 36. Like the, there's no non-block blocks for the Saurus, right? So they're not super likely to, uh, to fail anything. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just horrific isn't it that there's just the seven strong boy front like how do you even vaguely attempt to get to the skinks <laughs> yeah uh, he's, if he's got if he's taken his slayer he's got to try and get the slayer in and do doing something he's he's not having a lot of luck that's the third non knockdown mm. well we've got some contact at least yeah, I'd like to have seen the two guards go in where the Saurus is that's most uh, advanced. The two squares in front of the troll slayer. Put those two guards somewhere in there, um, or at least put them just directly in front of the two Saurus because you've already you're touching on the left uh, on the right flank as we look at it. So go and go and use your eleven players to bully their seven, and and try and use the guard effectively. Yeah. If you don't do anything, you're just going to get punched off. Yeah. 
Yeah, lizards are fantastic at beating off dwarves. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you can you can hit both guards, right? You can blitz that guard and block that guard. And then the dwarves only get one hit back, probably. Well, an extra hit now with this push. Two now, yeah. You've got to whack the guard here. Yeah, I think he has to. Probably with this guy, there's an argument for activating the croc, see if, see if it works, and then you can blitz with the other Saurus. But also just not activating, keeping these guys here seems pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah. The moment this turns into a removed dwarf, they're in major trouble. Yeah. Yeah, this is the problem with like trying to jam in, right? It's we've got four down dwarves. It wasn't unrealistic to have a removed dwarf. And if it's one of your guarders, you're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. The hit on the runner. I think it's more important to deal with a guard. Like like blitzing that one blitzing the first guard lets you hit the second guard as well. If you blitz if you blitz this runner, then okay you can stand here and hit one guard, but then you've left you've left a guard and a and a blitzer in contact and so you want to clear as much clear as much contact as possible. And you know, look if you're gonna get lucky, like give yourself the best chance to you know, best payoff if you do. And and Kazin, Kazin guards is pretty amazing, and I, yeah, obviously Kazin runner would have been great as well. Like, there was an argument for blitzing runner, but it, I think it's more that you you basically guaranteed to leave a guard in contact if if you didn't blitz a guard. You could send the runner around the back here, potentially. He yeah, you can you can block here, can't he? And then one, two, three, four, yep. five, six, double GFI, <laughs> double GFI, blitz a skink, or just or just have him. Have him as a threat, a backfield threat, but very scary, very scary with only one in total. I do want to see the Mighty Blow Troll Slayer. If you're going to take a Slayer, you've got to do something with it. Oh. And the one hit he gives back is a Kaz. <laughs> uh -oh. That's crazy, isn't it? Knocks over four dwarves, nothing. Gets one block back. Has Saurus, he's got to Apple. Even though it's thirty-seven and a half percent these days, I think you have to Apple a Kaz Saurus. I just think you have to. Yep. So you've played you play lizards a lot more than I do. Do you think that when you go down a Saurus like this, you now have to up your game speed and play slightly more aggressively, or is minus one okay to deal with? I think minus one is okay, but I don't like it. <laughs> I think down two is pretty bad, and it's not even bad. So I, I, I do think it's more like, I think it's more how you perceive it. You can totally win with like four Saurus left, right? Three Saurus left even, but I think one is, is already, it just means they're going to be able to get to your skinks more and stuff. Like that's the problem, right? Like, so it, it's just starting, it's starting to slip away one down yeah and it, it's not that early right there was the there was the timeout so it, it's not that early it's turn five for smilzo but um but yeah yeah the apple failed i think it was correct to use it but um <laughs> it's not as easy as it looks oh that did <laughs> um yeah it, it the main thing is just, it's just it depends on it depends obviously on like board state score line skink health but yeah, it's it's obviously it's obviously not good, is it? <laughs> uh, would I've used the Apo, says Steve? Yeah, I, I absolutely I would have done. I think I think the Apo is there for KO Saurus potentially at, at, at points, and then you're there for for dead Saurus. Yeah, it's it's probably just first chance you get to use it, right? Like. Uh... If if it's a KO on turn one or turn two, like obviously it's terrible to suffer a KO turn one or turn two, so it's a great use of the apple. But obviously you don't want to have to be using it then, but I think you use it then instantly. Um, yeah. Ooh, so we could we could block the guard and then block <laughs> the slayer and then maybe even croc splits and then clear all those three off. So. It's probably what he wants to do. 
You'll see. <laughs> Damn it. This, this is your last turn for moving. I, I think that now the dwarves have got the ability to be able to stop the dinosaurs moving forwards. Maybe they need to roll this. Is this where the cage just comes forward? Or is this just my... I, I get nervous in this position. I don't think you have to get nervous. Wait, wait, so here's a nice little play here. He hasn't done it. <laughs> but a nice little play could have been put two skinks in here. And then 3D blitz with a crocs to chain off the other guard. And then block this guy. And then potentially get another saurus. If you, if you were panicking, then you could have got like you know the crocs quite far forward and the saurus quite far forward. I don't think you need to panic yet, but um, I don't think you need to not panic either. <laughs> like it's 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 a little bit concerning, yeah. Yeah, I hated him not putting the crocs on the line. Honestly, like I just think you know three dice with mighty blow. It's literally all Nurgle have for like their first <laughs> their first like eleven games. So just denying yourself three dice mighty blow hits on purpose, I I don't like. Well, I'm, I, I think he might end up blitzing with a lying down Saurus here, just because I don't see what else he's going to do. I don't see where the other bl where the blitz is now if it's not there. I'm not sure I would have put the skinks in front of the crocs. This is seemingly asking for trouble. Yeah. Uh, the problem is I don't see who he blitzes with the down crocs. So, like, because it's all just a bit annoying, isn't it, with this guard on the edge? Like, do you just blitz a dude and not move? That seems rubbish, doesn't it? And he yeah. can't, so like blitzing and not moving, and all this is horrible. So I really like the the Crocs, the Crocs 3D. I thought was a pretty nice blitz, or or just punch here and then, and then Crocs blitz. But I think using your Crocs blitz over here and just standing him up. But the fact that he's moved these guys and not stood this guy up means that he probably should be blitzing with this guy. Otherwise, he should have stood him up, you know, five minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, he's into bonus time already. Hmm. Which are the long beards? The two guards nearest the ball, and then there's a, a, a collection of them in the middle of the field, right? Uh, yeah. So we, we can we can put the we can put the things on look, so you can see. Uh, blue is is I don't know why that's blue. Green is the runner. Purple are the slayers, and then bright yellow are the blitzers, <laughs> and, and dark yellow are the blockers. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Yeah, th these guys can't go along for it. Oh, he's, he's posted him as like a juicy blitzing threat. I'm not sure about that. I'd have wanted him like, you know, maybe just here. Yeah. Um, because, In line. Yeah. Because now you're, now you're just <sighs> inviting, inviting a tackle hit. Well, I, I was thinking uh, you, you, you were in making... Oh, no. You've got to eat that. that that's an auto-eat. It is, but it was an auto blitz, wasn't it? Like, why are you blocking this guy instead of blitzing with this guy first, right? Because this gets him up, like... Uh, okay, it would have failed, but he would have had an extra standing Storus, wouldn't he? And he's not going to yeah. re-roll it. So that was a bit of a mistake from Smiles or Smiles or... Could have asked them how they pronounce their names, I guess. <laughs> a bit of a mistake from him, I think, there. But obviously, brutally unlucky to have dub skulled twice with a two re-roll Lizardman build. Is there any universe where you take out the, the skink that's in front of the ball carrier? Just ignore the, the bait and go for the that skink and just try and get on the ball somehow. Because you can get a long beard onto the ball here. Because of the double skull. You can. I don't hate it. Yeah, and then if you it. take out take you can probably double tag the ball, probably. Or you could single tag it and then tag out the crocs. Yeah, I don't know. And I think I just blitz the skink. I think I blitz the deeper <laughs> skink and just move <laughs> over. Uh -huh. I see you take the bait. Okay, <laughs> it's not bait, is it? You, it's hard to blitz this guy and chain him and stuff, isn't it? It's oh, he's frenzy blitzing and dub sculling. It's, it's all the rage these days. <laughs> I'd rather just hit him with tackle, but never mind. I 
think it's slightly mathematically better to do the frenzy, but yeah, I don't know. I think I think I like to use the tackle. It feels better. Well, he could have three diced with the tackle, couldn't he? Oh yeah, in that case, yeah, it's three mm. dice. Yeah, like the, the, these guys aren't getting very far, are they? Particularly, so he could have he could have moved these guys up three diced and then run these through. Well, he's putting his he's putting his runner right out there. So I guess he's slamming in as much as he can with little stuff. Well, if he puts the guard around the back uh, on the diagonal, touching both the Saurus, uh, sorry, the Crocs and the Chameleon Skink, um, and then you can slam one of the others on the on the diagonal. Oh no! <laughs> oh. oh. No, I'm not good at surfing, but I reckon I can spot one. Do you know what? I think Adam Savage would spot that surf. <laughs> <laughs> the Mythbusters one. <laughs> um, well, there you go. He makes the GFI. That's yeah. That's a bit. That's a bit spicy. He didn't. He, so the reason is that obviously Andy goes there safer, but this does stop him blocking him off with the Crocs, right? So this is kind of like higher payoff, but it's it's super risky, isn't it? Super risky. Even six long beers are fucking overpowered. Wow. <laughs> yeah, they are. They really are. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, what's he called? PC is the expert on movement six. Uh, <laughs> movement six long beards. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, fair, yeah, well, he's actually, yeah, he's pretty good, isn't it? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, the final state, but I mean, he saved it with all the GFIs, right? And he's he's got the multiple rerolls, so he was probably pretty, 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 uh, pretty confident of this. And plus, he's he's dwarves against lizards, isn't he? So you know, he's he's encouraged to try these higher risk, higher reward plays. And yeah, it's, it is actually looking pretty good. And if he does go for a surf this turn, well, good luck scoring. So yeah, I think that was pretty good, pretty good from uh, Hiru. But uh, he still might get surfed <laughs> because it's looking tricky, very tricky for Smiles, though, isn't it? Do you just reset here and just accept that you've got to back off a little bit? I'll take the surfed dwarf, um, and then you know it, it, I don't like this, but you've kind of almost got to open with the croc, push that guy off, um, step one of the skinks back, then blitz with the ball carrier into the guard, and just accept that you're safe. Then so you're resetting. Yeah, it's, it's not great, but I'm not seeing a great. I'm not seeing a lot of alternatives. Oof. No, it's 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 more than not great. It's well, yep. Yeah, I think that's what he's going to do. Yep. Yeah. Oh my god, it is great! It is great. He finally does something with the Crocs, and it's an instant Kaz. <laughs> Glorious. Apo, uh -oh, Apo. Uh -oh. Did he? Does he? Did he? Doesn't oh, he? Oh, it's just not a guard one. It's not. It's not a guard. Oh, it's not a guard. What was a guard line there? If it's yeah. a guard, you've got to. I thought it was guard too. Yeah, but yeah, it's, it's just it's just is is just the same as his uh, reserve. So yeah, never never going to apple that. Oh, he's going to blitz with this guy for a cage corner maybe, and then hope that he dodges. Oh, these are both dodge with with dodge. He didn't get a single tackler in. So he's got two dodges with dodge. Still hasn't stood this guy up. <laughs> Is he going to dodge with him? It's alright. Art's not going to watch this back. It'll be fine. <laughs> Gotta stand that guy up. I mean, he might be five plus dodging him at the end. Like it's it's pretty good, right? Like it's he's he's got the square to dodge too. And standing him up isn't doing a whole lot, so I, he, he might be dodging him at the end. But he's got to do these dodges from the air, the, the two skinks first. And then think about... Okay. <laughs> well, um, he's not going to dodge both of these first. He's going to try and dodge one. Wow, 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 wow. The so you know you said at the start this is very heavily favoured for the dinosaurs, right? They're yeah. the guys in red. <laughs> yeah, it was very heavily favoured for them. 
It is almost. I didn't say it was an auto win for lizards. I said almost an auto win for lizards. And uh, you know, look. One of the good things about lizards is, you know, using a strength five guy to make three dice blocks with mighty blow. Uh, he's done one block with a cross. It was a two dice, and he did make a cas. He he could have made five of those. He's not making it three dice. <gasps> oh my god! I like. This is pretty greedy, right? This is pretty greedy, only making it 2D. It's not wrong. It's not terrible. But it's really tempting to have put this Blitzer can reach there. The guard goes there, bases a Saurus as well, and you get three dice on it, and you still get your runner recovery. So I'm pretty surprised he didn't make that three dice. Yeah, he, d he dodged away from the uh, he dodged away from the non-tackle guys. Yeah, all three of these were non-tackle, so it was just a one in nine dodge fail into death. The blitz was a tackle dwarf. Yeah. Do you think the dwarves are able to score from here, like to really rub it in? <laughs> They're just in range, right? The runner's just in range there. When he picks it up, he's four GFIs away, so he's sure gonna try. <laughs> he might be able to. Yeah, this this Saurus that's been napping for like two or three turns now. Yeah, it's very tough. He's got to do four GFIs with one reroll, and he's got to bust through the dwarf, bust through the lizardman team. But it's not easy. It's not easy for the uh, for the lizards to stop him, right? I guess they've got to reroll. So. This one's had 12, so they're down to 10 now. If they get, if they can just get to the second half, they'll be on 10. Yeah. Not brewing. Just dodge off. I think the dodge was to close the cage corner at the back. I don't think there was a need to, but I, I don't hate the dodge off. Well, nah, maybe I do because he's basing him right. Like he's he's actually doing a decent job because by standing there because. If he blocks him, it's 1D, and then he doesn't free this guy. So he's actually doing a good job standing there. I, I like dodging off this this source at the end, but I, I quite like that trade for the dwarves. C closing the cage con doesn't seem necessary when you've got the uh, Slayer here, right? You've got the Slayer uh, and the lineman. It's all, it's all screened. Top. Top right. Oh, the Saurus! Oh my god, there's a Saurus. There's an instant 2D on the ball. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, well, yeah, there is that. That's why I'm here, right? But it's that 2D there that he's worried about, I think. Yeah, yeah, okay. In my head, I'd already, I'd already put the guard in there, you see, which was way better. <laughs> 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 Just quietly. <laughs> so yeah, oh, being better. Man. I see. He's not blitzing in with him? Okay. Okay, well. Uh, he's going to push the... He's, he's, yeah. Oh, surf. Yeah. It is a guard, isn't it? This one. Yeah. Nothing. All surf should be cars. Bullshit. Though. <laughs> yeah, it's fair enough. It is fair enough surfing a guard, because you know it's still tough for the the dwarves to score. And you still got a chance of scoring yourself, so yeah, I think this is pretty good. And yeah, it's not over, is it? He's still got 10. Not super likely to score on his own drive, but uh, pretty unlikely to get scored on with that tag. The tag probably does enough. Yeah, because he's going to have to go... He, he can't walk diagonally, can he? Sorry, yeah, he can't walk sideways. He has to go straight down, and there really isn't any way to get down the pitch. No, no, Which there's means a, he's dodging. Yeah, two there, one there, but this guy isn't based. So he could potentially knock over both of these with blocks and go this way and like blitz the source, or he can just dodge as well, right? You could blitz one and dodge from the other. Yeah. But yeah, he's just gonna try and secure it secure the nil nil. Which I think is reasonable. I I, I think if you looked at this and you said, oh, I'm going to play into 10 dinosaurs and I get the ball, if I score, I win. Yeah, all right. Yeah, 100%. This is a dream result, really. Uh, 
for the first half. Outbashed him and stopped the score. Maybe should have stood this guy up so he don't, don't get instantly 2 d first. Mm. Or making a GFI. Well, I guess he's getting instantly 2 d anyway because of this guy, isn't he? Uh, like nearly instantly 2 d Wow. Okay. Yeah, I guess that guy just isn't standing up. Yeah. Yeah, there's no point now. He can't score... Um, Lizards can't score. You want to give away another free hit. I'm a bit nervous that the ball carrier is going to take one for the team, though. Yeah, the thing he probably was anyway, right? He just needs to push to to two DM anyway. So yeah, you probably just you're probably just getting him hit for no reason if you stand up. Doesn't feel good, does it? Giving him like the free hit, but you're probably giving the free hit anyway. Like, there's two... You, you can free this guy up as well, so, like, it was just too easy to free people up to hit him. This changes. If he gets a removal on, on the dwarves, especially if it's the runner, of course, if he gets any removal here, maybe the lizards feel happy with this. Maybe. They'll feel happy because they're still lizards, not because <laughs> not because not scoring on their drive and getting out bash was good. <laughs> oh. oh, Gets a KO. You yeah, that doesn't come come back. You've got a path path carry that you can't risk not having it for the second half. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I like I like the apple there. Yeah. Because you've stopped them scoring. Like if it was a seventy five percent, maybe maybe you greed it right and hope hope you get it. But when it's a fifty percent, I think it's an auto apple. Yeah. Snapo. <laughs> Greed's the hit. Nearly, nearly trip skulls. <laughs> nearly trip skulls. And yeah, just minimise hits back. No need to stand anybody else up. And run away that skink. Yeah, and that's it. Done. Yeah, that's okay, because he's got a dodge to hit him. Yeah. And he's not going to foul this one, is he? I mean, he, he could... I think you're okay. Maybe you're not okay. I, no, I think you are okay with them fouling because it's it's gone pretty well for the dwarves. So yeah, I I, I think you, you've got to be pleased. If you're the dwarf coach here, this is it doesn't go get to go much better than this. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. Half <laughs> four's gone, but you've still got eleven, and you're driving for the win. And you've removed a Saurus, like big help to the to the offensive drive, big big help. And <laughs> Apple's gone. Any random removal now, and it, like it's pretty easy to randomly remove an armor nine. And then he's then the the equity starts shifting strongly towards the dwarf. So yeah, this is pretty strong position for Hiru right now. Do you put the Crocs on the line, or do you leave it off? I think you can leave it off on defense. I, I think he had to put it on on offense, but I think defense you can like move him to the point of attack kind of thing, can't you? And uh, I think it's okay. Yeah, you put block on the LOS is, is like better defense than strength five, right? Because he's got all the guards and and the multiple attempts. It's he's just much more likely to knock down a strength five defenseless player than he's a strength four block player, really. I think. Maybe he's not much more likely, but significantly, shall we say. <laughs> That's just the same. <laughs> more, more likely. With, with some increased probability. Somewhat. Some. <laughs> do, you, do you ever offset the boat here or anything like slightly adventurous? No. It, no. You don't, you don't ever move it around? <laughs> no. I hate the boat. <laughs> There's a, this, for this, the boat just wants to be soaking. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need a bouncer. I don't know what it's called. The, the person who does the bouncing. Does it, if anybody knows what the uh, what the what the bouncer's called in the soaking, but yeah, in this, there's nothing. There's nothing adventurous here. With no, I think with down a player, down a Saurus, I think that removes your, you know, your your chances of. 
doing something a bit, you know, you've only got six strong guys, right? Like you've, you've got this guy hiding here. I just don't think you can do much without without that extra strong guy. I thought it looked a bit stupid, J5, so I got rid of it. To be honest. Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> well, it hadn't been microwaved yet, so it wasn't ready, J5. You can't, you can't have that. Yeah, if I if I was gonna if I was gonna Photoshop it in, maybe like do it properly, but it would look pretty stupid. <laughs> Yeah, I, th I think with the full team, maybe you do something to try and. Uh, well, he's he's got he's only got ten players anyway, hasn't he? But like, if he had the seventh strong guy, then maybe you could try something. But generally, not. I think you just you just rely on being lizards and ooh, one goes down for free. Doesn't take an arm break. Well. Kind of does. <laughs> well, okay, he isn't going to get removed. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> it's a safe stun. Yeah. He's not dead. Both down. Have yeah. the extra bit of bite. This is the problem with the Mighty Blow Slayer, isn't it? Like, if it had just been a normal hit, then he would have taken the push and got more hits and stuff, but... Now he's yes. a bit lucky that he, he got the both down to be able to get the second hit. I always like putting the Slayer on the end. You, you play with a lot of, like, like playing a lot of Necro and you you have no choice but you have to go Frenzy, not Frenzy, Frenzy. But if you've only got one Wolf, I always put them on the end so they, they activate last and then you can control it a bit more. Yeah. Yeah, and, that, and now he's like, the armor rate is exposed, isn't he? And he's got like, he's got to work out how to... And I don't think he can really protect him. Maybe, maybe blitz with the guarder from here, so that you've got guard on each side. <laughs> but even then, he can still just go in there and hit him. So, yeah, you can't leave that slayer because that's that's the lizard's route back into this. He's chip something, and then maybe they can start thinking about putting pressure on. They've yeah. got to get rid of something. So you, you've got to start on the. Oh, I don't know. The problem here was the push yeah. was was with the, see what I liked was put in the assists here and then that's why I said blitz from there with the guard so that if you yeah. get a push you push him clear whereas now he's pushed him back into taking a hit. This, this almost feels like it, it's it's contriving to give away what advantage you have, which is more players don't give away hits. <laughs> yeah. And, it's tough, isn't it? Like, it, it, look, it is tough as dwarves versus lizards. Um, so yeah, but it sure looks like we're going to see a, a croc split and a, a saurus block and a, maybe it's a skink block as well, right? Yeah, you take all the hits, all the hits, unless this isn't a pickup, which it is. So you take all the hits. Yeah, exactly, Sean. But like, just don't don't lose momentum, right? So so make your safe blitzes, make you know don't expose your armor rate, don't give away hits, and he's 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 potentially giving up hits here. Oh, is that the blitz? It doesn't look like it. No. Hmm. Well, it's got to be the dinosaur lying down next to the guard near the crocs. It's got to be. Yeah, I think so. Maybe he's going to blitz the guard. Uh, maybe he's going to blitz this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, that's a GFI. So he's, oh no, he's going to blitz this guard uh, and then block that guard. Yeah, yeah. And then that that frees the skink, doesn't it? Yeah, but he's run the skinks backwards. Yeah, but it it frees this skink, doesn't it? This skink's on yeah. tackle, yeah, so this can, this he can has to away, free yeah. that skink. And like, this is safer, right? The Croc splits had better payoff because you get to smash this guy, and then you block, you, you then you block down with, with an assist, and uh, and then he can, if if you power that hit after you've powered the Saurus, you would have had three, like you would have had two assists here, right? If blocking there with these two assists, so but with not blitzing with the Crocs, 
I like this. And this is probably better than the Tomb of the Crocs. The problem with running away like this is, <laughs> if you were one nil up, this gets a lot better because you can't just lose. Whereas now you're giving the dwarves a lot of free space to try and get forward. So there's there's five stood up dinosaurs and you've got your entire team. Hmm. The funny thing is, they can still fight you with these. <laughs> They're so strong. It's unbelievable. How much are you prioritizing the mighty blow hit in the turn ordering here? Uh, or are you just going to just take it anyway? I'm definitely going to take it, but I'm going to just concentrate on maximum, like, knockdown, you know, potential odds and and clearing and stuff. Right? I don't want to base the crocs. So, yeah, I'll just try and work it out like that. What Can you get a guard? You can't really get a guard in here, can you? One, two, three. No. I don't know. I'd just try and do what I could. It's tricky, isn't it? I think you can knock down all three of those. I, that guard that's on the left-hand side just needs to walk in one square, I think. Ooh. Mm. That's not a good square for that guard to have gone in. I'm not, I'm not sure this is the way. No. But it is tricky. This is the problem. Like, it's, you know, you've really got to think about how you can make as many blocks as you can that you try and try and keep your uh, you know try and keep I don't know, keep ahead of them but like they're all strength four and if you don't knock them down they can hit your guarders and then all of a sudden you're a team of strength three that looks a bit pathetic <laughs> into one dicing or blitzing with a ball carrier yeah. he does have block though Assisting with the ball carrier. This is a bit adventurous. It is. You've got to follow this up to, cre to create the, the the cage corner. Yeah, but he's got the he's got the Slayer right, and he's still got the Blitz. He's got the Slayer block, and he's still got the Blitz. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty nice getting the pow. Is it was spooky if he'd rolled the push, but getting the pow is really nice, isn't it? Two stone breaks. Amazing. Yeah, that saves everything. Even them being pow saved everything, but uh, being AV breaks is. So how do you go if you're the lizard coach here? How, how what what are you trying to do to to dig yourself out of this problem, right? Because I I I just get cross when I get in this position when I'm lizards. Yeah, and I mean that that's step one. Yep. <laughs> get okay. mad, regret all your life decisions. Uh, activate your crocs first. Safe moves first. Just just you know, just maybe just put the crocs there, and then blitz to there, and then you've got a bit of a screen. Move the skinks back and then hope for next turn for something to happen when you get your Saurus back. Like it's, it's rough. Like it's just rough, isn't it? It's just a rough game of Blood Bowl. Do your best, but I, you know, do the Crocs first to see where the other. Like if you'd gone stupid there, this is like a worse square for the Crocs for the Saurus, right? So activate the Crocs first, not only because it's safe moves first, but just to see if it actually gets there at all. Yeah. And when are you pulling the skinks in? Because at the moment they just we're, we're playing with half a team. It's tough, isn't it? I mean, you stay in front as long as you can, as like as long as you can without committing them is is how long, right? Because versus dwarves, especially, you know, if they're getting hit by a tackle, they're not they're not long for this world, are they? So you have to uh, you have to make sure they're safe, and obviously the, the stuns mean that they're not. But you know, if, if the dwarves just pile in here. You never know, maybe if they can come in and do something, but they have to all come in and all do something on the same turn, basically, I think. Yeah. The one annoying thing is, yeah. But normally you want to look at this stage, right? Normally you want to look at this stage. So this is... It is a bit different in that regard. Yeah. 
Is Blood Bowl that much better than two? The 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 thing is, Blood Bowl two is like dying, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like it's Blood Bowl two. It's old. It's like what, nine years old. It's on its last legs. People are still in leagues and stuff, but you know, it's the old rules. And Blood Bowl three is the future, isn't it? My draws were not built like this. I had an extra an extra guy. I actually had no slayers. <laughs> I actually had no slayers. <laughs> and I had an extra guard and two runners. Um, so quite a lot different to this. Did you do five and five and one? Yeah. Yeah, five, five guard, one mighty, yeah. Um, plus my mighty was on a tackler. To, uh, you know, kill snotlings and... Snotlings, yeah. And, to run as oh wow Ooh. well there we go that Ooh, yeah. it's not over it's not over. don't say it's over but uh that's looking really good for the dwarves now do you think that they might hang on and play for the one turn more than um, actually piling it like let's say the drive's completely ruined and and you've got to that decision point and that's what you've decided. Do you play for the one turn, or do you play for um, trying to fix a semi-lost cause? I think you do your best to, to do something as safely as possible, so you're not losing too much from just playing for the one turn. But you're, you know, you're resigned to, you know, like there's, there's no point doing stupid things, right? There's no point just going for a six plus one D. So try and try and just get yet. Try and get your guys as safe as possible, like free them slash 2D as much as possible to just try and get... I mean, it's hard, right? You've got no players left. This is <laughs> this is the point where if you're playing on the ladder, you'd just be like, oh, well, pointless game. I'll just try and get SPPs, you know, totally play for the one turn. Ladders just play for the one turn and, and hope your Saurus don't die. But uh, with this, with it being everything on the line... You know, you've got to try and do your best to mount some kind of defense. Because even if it's stupid, if you can get a 5 plus 2D, which you might be able to, right? Or a 6 plus 2D, that's that's still pretty decent, right? A, a 6 plus 2D isn't ridiculous odds at all when when you whack in both rerolls. Not bad at all. <laughs> no, but it's every shut up, J5. It's res, so there's no there's no skills, there's no there's no skill advancement, there's no player deaths. There's uh there's nothing like that. So Sorry. Yeah, everything is on the results of the game. There's no there's no uh there's no development aspect. And and winning by margin also doesn't matter. There's no touchdown differential, one nil and seven nil are the same. Yep. Although if someone wins seven nil, Jesus Christ. <laughs> please let that be me. Please let that be me. Um, <laughs> Not a fan of this blitz, I'll be honest with you, because he's like behind the ball already, right? But I guess so. I guess that's why. Why I don't like it is, I guess, why he liked it. He didn't want to be further stranded behind the ball. But if you blitz this guy, then you could have run him back like seven, right? This guy could have powered and then gone another six squares and gone really far back. Um, but I, I guess they've both got pros and cons, haven't they? Yeah. So to sum up your answer, it was. Um, don't let them do do don't do nothing, but don't commit very much either to over committing. So it's sort of on the fence, really. Yeah, like giving up without giving up, basically. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I'd try to do. I I I I'd basically give up and and play for the one turn. You know, essentially, because I'd resign myself. I'd resign myself to it, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't play for it. You know, I'd still play for like the any desperation thing I could get. The dream of desperation. I'd, I'd play for the dream of desperation. That's what I'd do. Because now it doesn't look like you're going to get a desperation move. But you're still a team with like five strength four, right? So you, you might get a desperation move. You might. Bad dice, quad skulls, dub skulls, bad, bad positioning, bad turn ordering. You know, things can happen. Like one dicing randomly for no reason? That Exactly. Well, that's a dub skull. If that's a dub skull, then uh, it's still not great for you. But <laughs> things could start to change. <laughs> You're not surfing this, are you? 
Oh my god, he oh is. My god. No, he's not. <laughs> Thanks, Hamid. Right, yeah. <laughs> when I'm saying it's a bad surf, it's a bad surf. I mean. <laughs> Bloody hell, Wartan. You might, you might be waiting a while for that, I'm afraid. <laughs> so yeah, you can, you can free a Saurus here, right? You can free a Saurus with a... Uh, he, can, he can either 1D block to free a Saurus Blitz, which I wouldn't hate doing. Because, you know, the, the, you know you're very much desperation mode now. So you, you could stand this guy up in 1D, or you could Blitz him and then move him. I think either one's... Just personal preference from that. Yeah. With with two rerolls, the one dice is pretty terrible. But it, it you know, it, it does give you higher payoff, doesn't it? So <laughs> it's not doing either. Presumably he's now blitzing with the dinosaur lying down. Yeah. Yeah. It it is just starting to show a chink of being not terrible. The problem is the, these Saurus are going to have to fight plus dodge at some point, right? And they're, they're already a long way behind the ball, so it's... It is rough still. And it's nil-nil, so if they score, you just lose, basically. Like, you, you do have the one-turn chance, but it, it's not great, right? It's not a great one-turn chance with down players and needing three pushes, and uh, I don't know how good Smills is at one-turning, so... Yeah, it's, it's, it's not great. The dwarves. Oh dear. Oh dear, that's going to cost you potentially all three skinks. Yeah. yeah. Um, have the dwarves had anyone uh, removed other than the random no one cares about player? Um, no. So yeah, if you're going to do that one D, you do it with the, that blocks that block Saurus earlier, which get, lets you blitz this guy with the Saurus. So like that was a bit like the the payoff kind of thing. That he, yeah, this is yeah. So Turns out it was a good surf <laughs> in the end. <laughs> but yeah, no, I yeah, I agree that was a that was a real greedy weird blitz previous turn, but obviously now it's an instant free surf. So this is where you lie down and hope. Oh yeah, now I guess now I guess, but even now there's no point lying down, right? You're still Saurus, you're still Armour Nine. Well, yeah, so Sauruses can do stuff, but the Skinks are just not ever getting back up here. No, no problem. You need not. you need two for being able to one turn, so yeah. and we have precisely two left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Saurus are uh... <laughs> the Skinks. Sorry, the Skinks are never getting up yet. Correct. And, and you can foul them, right? You can foul them as the dwarves. Your defense gets worse with ten players against the one turn, but then obviously if you get it out, then there is no one turn. So interesting would whether you, to foul or not. Would you foul here? I think I would. That's a good I have question. No shame. I have no shame. Uh, yeah, he had to put that guy there, right? Because this Saurus had a five plus off one, two, three, four, five, six, GFI, GFI. Um, he could have fouled, couldn't he? I don't think he's leaving anything on by... Oh, I guess he is. I guess he's maybe he's leaving up like a 1D, right? You dodge off there. Nah, it's hard. No, he probably don't. He probably fouled because he's not giving anything up. The, the 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 question is not so much whether you foul it's it's the next turn yeah exactly auto joy that the thing is the foul is like a lot better next turn and it's not really costing you anything to not foul this turn so you might as well just get a bigger foul next turn yeah so at this point you might actually have to run a, a skink away maybe but then uh, there's nowhere to stand it is it? The, the one that's marked by the two slayers there is no way you can put that no. But you get a second foul neck the turn after that J5. <laughs> Quantity is not always better than quality because every time you foul, you've got the chance to get sent off. So if you make it like an almost not or break, at least you'll uh, at least you'll get something when you inevitably get your Slayer sent off instantly. <laughs> <laughs> it 
There's, yeah, as Andy says, there's nowhere for this guy to run, right? If he runs up here, he gets he gets nailed by tackle. This this one could run away, but he's got a dodge off tackle. So I would never stun Jay Passer. I, I I would just get sent off for nothing. I've I've I never stunned anybody. You've got an emote for that, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've got Jim Fowl. Never pow anybody either. <laughs> There's a power look. They're, they're, the, they're the powers that I always roll. <laughs> and there's what happened every time I found. So there you go. Most nice man in Blood Bowl. Fact. <laughs> so he's just gone really safe, and it's not that safe. This is the prop, right? Like, this is the, this, the YouTube cage, as Lupac coined it way back in the day. And it's like, you know, this X cage. Is it a good idea? Now, now, like, what are you doing about these Saurus? You've probably got to tag them, right? But then they can they can maybe blitz themselves free. And you, you've got very few players left, I guess. And he's got to tag him, right? He's, no, no, he's not. Oh. Well, this one can tag. This one can tag. This one can tag him. He's going to blitz him. So he is tagging him. But it's a GFI. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's okay. weird, isn't it? We'll blitz the... Just tag no, him. No, I don't know. I've got nothing. No blitz, just tag him. No, free him up. Let him run around and do whatever he wants. Yeah. So he, he has to, okay. I mean, he can block him off. You can just literally instantly block him off and he's got a free Saurus. So, you know, this is the th things can happen, can't they? Things can happen. Or you could, uh, can you get both three? You could have blitzed him off. He hasn't done it. <gasps> Oh, he could have blitzed them both off. Yeah. Oh, what Hardly a play me. that would have been. Oh, man. And then he's got one Saurus on three dwarves and two free Saurus to come around and get him. YouTube, just because, like, you know, it's like the standard cage, right? X cage. You know, it's it's it called it YouTube cage. Loop, I called it a YouTube cage because it's the kind of cage that somebody's seen, you know, like... At how to play Blood Bowl, and this is a cage, and they do it when it's inappropriate. Because do you really need this guy here? You know, you probably could have done like a better formation, only use three players to to screen the ball, and had another player out doing something or whatever. Yeah, that player that's just been blitzed. If you if you actually include him in the cage, you can then double screen, or, or pretty much all the way around. The ball can stand where the Slayer is, and you can double screen. Yeah, or you, or you could have had less people in. The, you could have had less people in the cage, right? You could have had ball there. Yeah. And three players so there's lots of things you could have done that like work out better and just various points like a lot of the time you don't need one of the cage corners or you could just do a loose screen or like a, a space in between the screen and stuff but you know the, it calls it the youtube cage because just because you know people say this is a cage and then people do it because they know that's a cage <laughs> and it's not always correct yeah this could be very 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 expensive could be. This could be the end of the game. Yeah, it could be. Oh, he's 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 got shadowing. <laughs> Does nothing. It's only a, it's only a dead. Wait. It's only a dead. It's, it's fine. Only a dead. That didn't did the Kion symbol not come up? That was weird. Maybe I saw things, but he's dead anyway. <laughs> That's the end of the game because he's now only got one comedian skin. Uh, that he could get a timeout. Okay. Touch back and time out. <laughs> nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> Touch back and time out. It is possible. Oh, no. Do you know? I was waiting until the end of the game. I was going to ask if you know who the, these guys will play, but it's an either or at the moment, isn't it? Um, oh yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely going to be one of the people. Like, I, I'm pretty sure they play the corresponding person in the bracket, right? Yeah, yeah, they do. So uh, there is. I can I can just put it on here. I can just put it on for a second. Um, oh, it's Chundran and Aryan. There you go. Wow. So, uh, yeah, Black Orcs or Skaven for each of these people. Oh, man. 
it's a bit of a di like it's a bit of a dicing, right? He did he did remove the the early Saurus. Um but yes, yeah, smiles Jim, I didn't me, like. Let me jump in there. Okay. Do you think that's a bit of a dicing? Have you not cast my first two games? Oh yeah, Your, yours were comedy megas. Insanity. The first one was an insanity dicing. <laughs> the second one was it was a comedy mega. The third one was it was okay the first half, right? But then the second half, the pitch invasion. Even though it was like only one thing, it just decided the game, right? All of the rest of the plays almost didn't matter because that pitch invasion, like three guards down on an offense. Oof. Oof. Um, and like obviously he got he got better luck in removals game then like after he'd already lost basically right That's, oh here we go we're going in for the uphill and fails yeah this started with dub skulls I, I didn't like I didn't like where he put his crocs I didn't like his crocs I want the crocs in the west making three dice blocks with mighty blow so I didn't like how he started the game how he set up with the crocs randomly off to the side. Um, but I think apart from that, I don't think he's done much wrong, right? I, I think yeah. he's, I think both sides have played fine. Uh, I, the ordering, right, with the standing up his Saurus, he probably should have st stood up his Saurus, played a bit safer, um, getting that Saurus up, or blitz with that Saurus himself, stuff like that. But yeah, I mean, he's rolled up quite a few dub skulls. And then obviously every time his skinks have been hit, they've exploded pretty much. Uh, which is, you know, you get those games, right, as lizards. Um, but yeah, maybe you could have done more to, to stop them. And yeah, Snake in the GF5 was classic, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, Shambatat. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? I, I beat two lizards um, in, in my run and then Hiru's beaten sm Smiles on now, but... It's so bad when you're playing it, honestly. Like, it feels so bad as the dwarves. Like, yeah, watching this little length, these skink heads explode, <laughs> it must be terrible. Oh. Well, yeah, when this happens, it's okay. When this happens, it's okay. But when, like, your whole team is fighting seven big guys and, like, they're holding their own and, like, you're struggling, that feels bad. But, yeah, when you finally get to the skinks and they explode every single time you touch them, it's pretty good. <laughs> Was ever a dwarf right, um, uh, roster? Just to throw this out, because I like making random rosters. Five guard and a sneaky git runner. Oh man! Well, you, no, you need a double, right? You need the double. So, it's, it, isn't it, I thought the runners had sneaky git access? No, no, no. They they get like general and passing. Oh uh, yes, they can't have dodge. Yeah. yeah. Well, what what Elliot and I both thought about was old world alliance, where you could take like. All of the guard positional guys, and then get six guard from that, and then you could stack sneaky get dirty player on a human catcher. And we both thought about doing that roster, and then we both thought against it because old world alliance suck. <laughs> like we wouldn't know how we'd win apart from like guard being good and dirty player sneaky get being like insane a lot of the time. But you know. Really, all there was was the high roll, wasn't there? And 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 just hoping guard is good. Yeah. Yeah, that that would be fine until you got to the semi final and played Crucifer and realised that high roll doesn't work. Hmm. Well, to be fair, Cruz has gone for six guard, <laughs> six oh, guard, yeah. two blodges, which is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Really like yeah, Chris's it, it, team. I think that'll be a right handful. And I think that the strength teams will struggle because he's got so many control skills in mixed in with that guard. And then the the elf teams just go, what, what do I do with sixth guard? What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think I think it's a real real tasty team. And obviously Cruz Cruz is uh, you know, the goat of Blood Bowl too, isn't he? So it's gonna be a handful for anybody, that team. Who's he got in round one? Is it, in, is it in Arian or? It's uh, it's not. <laughs> it's it's maybe Elliot in the second round, and so that that that's who Cruz has. Um, we 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 have a little look at it here. So I should look at the whole draw. So yeah, Hiru has just beaten Smiles all there. So Hiru will go through the winners bracket. Smiles will go to the losers bracket, and the you know Hiru will play Chunter or Inarian. Smiles will play the other one. 
and uh, Chris has got Moomin Slayer on Underworld. So, uh, and uh, so Chris, <laughs> and then if he beats Moomin Slayer with Underworld, he's, he might have to face Eliod with Underworld. Uh, but you know, Diamed no pushover is he? Uh, so, you know, it's not it's not a lock by any means for Eliod there. Um, yeah, there's the. I've got a YouTube video that you can check that out uh, if you want to know more. If you want to know more about uh, about the cup draw, there is a there is a YouTube video there, and uh, all the teams are in there and everything. Talk all about them. Can't make predictions anymore. Um, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, that was it. You know, well played. I thought both played well. Congratulations, Hiro. Commiseration smiles. Or he will get a second chance. Thank you very much, Andy, for joining me in the booth. Glorious to have you here, finally. Thank you very much indeed. Um, the, the last thing for me is the link for the official casting, which is part of the reason I'm here, uh, is, if you don't mind me linking it in the channel, it's the official Nacon channel, uh, which is that one there. Jimmy and I will be on that. Um, so if you haven't already followed it, go and follow that channel. That's where you'll see Jimmy and me over the next two weekends. Yep, glorious. Yeah, it's, it's the 13th and the 14th and the 20th and the 21st, and we'll be doing the, the official Nacon. Uh, is it Nacon or Nacon? Nacon? Nacon. It's got to be Nacon, right? It's got to be Nacon. Anyway, however you pronounce it, we'll be doing that with Adam Savage, and Adam Savage will be on tomorrow, I, I believe. Fingers crossed, hopefully, uh, pend you know, d depending on his uh, free time and stuff. Uh, Adam Savage should be on tomorrow, where uh, we can be casting... Uh, Whichever match is happening tomorrow, one of them, <laughs> one of them. Kian Dare Strider tomorrow is is on at one. So there you go. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So uh, thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.